So hello and welcome to the Younger Theatre Isolation Series. I'm Sarah <laughs> and I'm one of the theatre reviewers here at A Younger Theatre. Today I'm joined by Tori Allen Martin, who makes up 50% of the wonderful non-profit organisation Burn Bright, with, along with Sarah Henley. Hi Tori. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, so I'm going to do a little introduction about you now. Um, but, <laughs> um, if I forget anything, just add it afterwards. Um, so Tori is a writer, director, actor, producer, singer and songwriter. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> um, she is the creative director of Interval Productions, which she founded in 2009. Through this, she's produced eight musicals, I believe. <laughs> Something like that. I don't even know, probably. <laughs> um, uh, one of which, Streets, was nominated for Best New Musical and also got Tori nominated for Most Promising Playwright. Um, Tori's self-penned EP, Wasted, hit the top 20 in the iTunes singer-songwriter chart in 2014. And Tori's career in the arts has taken her all over the world, from the West End to New York. Tori is an actor in the TV shows Pure, Unforgotten and London Kills, all of which I believe are on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, London Kills isn't. That's on BBC. That's on BBC. I, I think Catch Up. But yeah, the others are on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in 2017, Tori was selected for the BBC's New Talent Hot List as a writer. And finally, as I mentioned before, last year, Tori co-founded Burn Bright, with Sarah Henley, and that's what we're going to be talking about a bit more today. So you're not just involved in lots of the art stuff, you're a bit of a master in a lot of the art stuff. <laughs> oh no, Jack of all trades, master of none is probably more my No, mind. quite the opposite. Yeah, um, is there anything I've missed that you'd like to add? Or? No, that's long, that's long as it is. Everyone will switch off, they'll be bored. <laughs> no, it's really impressive stuff. Um, cool, so firstly, how's your isolation going? Yeah, I mean it's it's just a weird old time, isn't it? I think yeah, to take it day by day, and I think not even that for me. I just sort of take it hour by hour. Yeah, um, <laughs> and do whatever feels good in that what kind of thing <laughs> in that moment. Yeah, so yeah, I I just you know I'm grateful for my health, and I'm just trying to sort of roll with the punches as I think. Yeah, day. nice. Is yeah. there any new skills or hobbies you've picked up out of the? boredom or <laughs> yeah it got really good at sitting on my bum watching telly i think is my skill That's no it. yeah no skills no new skills <laughs> getting up each day and getting dressed is a bit of a skill at the moment but... exactly exactly <laughs> cool um so um throughout all the work that you've done um i feel like you've gained quite a reputation for producing quite innovative theatre that sort of platforms more underrepresented talent that might otherwise be sort of pushed to one side. Mm. Um, and these aims are sort of consolidated in Burn Bright's ethos, is that right? Yeah, definitely. I think we've always, like Sarah included, we've just always felt like underdogs in our own way, I think, and we've never things have never happened easily it's always been that we've just got off our bums and and done it ourselves yeah. so I think yeah we've always felt that we wanted to create work for the people we saw around us and for ourselves and for I always say I want my work to look like a you know London tube carriage because it's such a you get such a diverse range of people and I think all work that's set today should look like that I don't think there's an excuse for it to not so I agree that's great yeah we've always wanted to champion people that we feel we don't see enough of yeah. That's and, yeah. um, and we're going to discuss exactly what burn bright is in more detail in a sec um but i think first we should talk more about your main impetus for creating it in the first place because i know that you're unfortunately slightly familiar with being pushed aside in the yeah. industry so yeah if you want to talk a little bit about that um, we can't say too much just because of legal mm -hmm. uh, reasons, but um, but yeah, the general impetus. 
Yeah, yeah we well we would yeah we were sidelined on a on a project that we'd worked on for four years and developed and come up with and written a script and named and then yeah it was announced without us as a part of it so <laughs> um when it's something you love so much that you've put so much into and believe in to suddenly find yourself not a part of that is is really shocking and I think you know regardless of the ins and outs our overriding feeling was that if we just lie down and take it then we're part of the problem and we didn't want to roll over and we felt it was important that we shone a light on it because we knew we knew that we'd never get what we wanted which was for the show to to be on and for us to be involved and you know that that was gone so we were like the only good that can come of this is that this sort of thing stops happening so that's why we decided to do what we did and to and to set up a company where we hope we can prevent things like this happening or if we can't prevent it at least it will be a safe space for somebody to yeah. speak to us or have that support that we didn't have initially because we did feel really alone with it and we didn't know what to do yeah. um so yeah i've yeah it was born of i'm very much i think like i very much believe in be the change you want to see and i don't i try and not have regrets and i try and take everything as a lesson so for us it was like this is a really rubbish situation but how can we turn it around and create positive change and be a force for good rather than part of the problem by just accepting it because yeah enough, enough, enough of that yeah exactly and but I think that's amazing I think that it, it must have taken a lot of energy to sort of bring yourselves back up again and was it something that did take a long time or was it something that was sort of quite a like natural reaction that came from and it just sort of happened um, it's taken ages it was really horrible like it was really traumatic um yeah and it was dragged on and on and on because going public for us really was a last resort we did we didn't want to do that so there'd been like sort of six months behind the scenes prior to yeah. any of that and then it continued you know for a long time afterwards um and yeah i don't i i don't think we ever really <laughs> realize the impact it had on us it's kind of nuts like i think yeah. i think we're still in the fallout of it now really and like i sort of i in the beginning like was gung-ho and like wrote and was like yeah i'm gonna say how i feel and sarah didn't write a thing and now she's picked up the pen again and i haven't yeah and it, yeah so it's it's weird it's affected us at different times and it um it just it rocks your whole place in the industry i think I, I've always felt very much like talent and hard work prevails and mm. your time will come and it everything we believed and everything we were heading for sort of got thrown back in our faces and we were like oh okay yeah. maybe you can just be unlucky maybe it doesn't matter how hard you work or yeah so it sounds you know relatively it's not that big a deal you know we've, we've got our health we're fight like but it really made us question everything and we felt very strongly that if we hadn't have had each other that would have been the end for yeah, us. I was say it's great that you had each other. Yeah that saved it and that's why we again why we wanted to do Burn Bright because we thought if that had happened to us individually mm. that would have ended our career definitely we wouldn't have yeah. tried again after that um, and there are women and people mm. men as well you know going through that alone mm -hmm. and that is just such a horrible thought yeah. for us so we were like right we don't want anyone to go through that alone so we'll be there <laughs> yeah, so i think that's amazing i think that's great so that kind of leads us on to talk more about what burn bright is if you could do a little introduction and explain yeah so it's sarah's better at it sarah's with the concise one i'm the waffler but i'm gonna try and channel her okay, so um, well. <laughs> so it's a not-for-profit organization uh built to try and level the playing field for women people who identify as women in the arts um and we're doing this via various means it's still really early stages so we hope to introduce a lot more especially when we can get out into the world <laughs> um and host lots of events and um talks and we've got our time bank and 
online events that will hopefully eventually become real life events. But yeah, yeah basically trying to make uh, theatre fairer for those who identify as women. Yeah, that's great. So it's sort of comprised at the moment of two main initiatives, right? So you have um, Time Bank, which you just mentioned, and Better in Person. So would you yeah. mind explaining like which, what each of these are? And yeah, so the Time Bank, ultimately we hope it ends up as a kind of Tinder for creatives, is the sort of line we're going with. So we, you're paired with, uh, you, writers are paired with people that they feel they need some help from or want a conversation with. So we've got people like Morgan Lloyd Malcolm, who wrote Amelia, Kirsty Swain, who wrote Pure on Channel 4, she writes for television, as does Oliver Lansley, who's done Flack. We've got um, PR people, producers, uh, legal advice. So as a writer, if you feel you need help in one of those areas, you can sign up and you get a free slot with that person at the moment on, on Zoom as time moves it you know might happen in real life I don't know but zoom is obviously handy for everybody yeah. um yeah and you can have a chat with this person about whatever you you feel you need help with and it's that simple really and we're just going to keep um updating it all the time so it's like a rolling thing um and there's no red tape around it you just send a little message saying what you need mm. because we definitely found with so many of these schemes or applying for stuff, you just spend so much time filling in application forms when you should be writing. Yeah. So we didn't want any of our stuff to feel difficult or like an ordeal. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's just a quick email. And if that person feels that they can help, they will book in with you direct. And if they don't, they can pass you on to, to somebody who might be better suited. Yeah. But we're really pleased with how it's gone so far. And yeah, people, people from the other creatives have, have been, who've given their time generously, have really loved it as well so it feels like a win-win and they can sort of learn from the people that they're speaking to as well like yeah, and it, uh, it connects you with people you otherwise you know never would have had the pleasure of meeting and I think it just helps to make us all feel less alone you know it's like we're in it like this exactly it reminds you that we're in it together and everyone just needs a little like pep talk sometimes yeah, yeah. a little pick-me-up <laughs> like, yeah, exactly and um, then Better in person. Yeah, so Better in person is an online uh, event. We're doing the pilot on the 25th of May at 8 p.m. Okay. And for this one, we commissioned uh, female, uh, we commissioned women writers that we admired and respected, that we felt were a diverse range of ages, um, abilities, and uh, class, colour, creed, <laughs> all of it. Um, and it's five minute plays written specifically for zoom because we felt there's a lot of uh readings of plays and but ultimately you would rather see them in their real setting where they were supposed to be played so we were like let's create something that's actually for zoom and isn't designed to be shown anywhere else so it's completely fit for purpose so and it's it's called better in person because it's based on um conversations that we're having that would be better in person. And we put a call out to the public to send their ideas or silly conversations they've had. And then moving forward, we'd like it to be something that you can um, submit yourself for so that we get lots of new talent involved. And in terms of the actors who are involved, we want a real mix of, you know, already known talent and brand new talent, which we've always done with Interval, our theatre company. We've right. always like had the names to bring people in and then hope you leave with a new favourite who's just graduated or so yeah so there's a really nice mixture but we felt so much of what we were seeing was very same same and very middle class very white same faces right and we just we wanted ours to be a sort of antidote to that and a place where you can discover new talent and uh yeah and right as they were actually getting a sort of fair platform yeah that's great and I think it's interesting how you know, you're saying you're now creating theatre for Zoom. I think mm -hmm. it's so interesting how that's happened and how from yeah. something that could have been extremely detrimental to the arts, being in lockdown mm -hmm. and, you know, not being able to go to theatre and stuff, I think mm -hmm. it's great that there is so much being done. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's fun. And I think you have, to, you have to roll with it. I think if you try and fight against it, it's a lose-lose, isn't it? So it's like, okay, we don't have to like it, but this is... yeah what it is and it's for the greater good so 
how do we embrace it? And, and there's so much funny to be had, like these ridiculous conversations on Zoom and people's mums plugging in wrong and you're looking up the nostrils and, you know, there's, there's actually a whole world of, of ideas. So we're really excited to, to see the plays and we're doing one as well. So it's the first thing Sarah and I've done. Amazing. What we've been through and yeah it's really it's really fun we were just giggling yesterday thinking of like silly things that we can do so yeah i hope it's just a but by the same time it could be really touching or sad so yeah, exactly yeah i just hope it'll be a nice sort of like fly on the wall where you feel like oh we're all again we're all in it together we're all going through this ridiculous world now that no one ever saw coming you know that's the new reality yeah and it's so rare that the world's does feel united in this way that is really obviously people are experiencing the lockdown in very different ways and some are luckier than others of course but I do think that that unity that you're saying is a really nice thing that's come from it um so what because what when I was reading about um your new organization what I thought was so nice was to see somewhere that is both you know the fun side of theatre and performance so platforming a place for people that identify as women to do you know show off their talent and do their thing but also on the other side you have the support and the advice which I think is really cool um so did both of those initiatives sort of come to you at once or did, was one of them before the other when you were thinking about creating Van Bright? I think that when we when we wanted to create something I think like we never expected it to all blow up how how it did so it actually became like a way bigger thing than I think we'd first anticipated and we raised a lot more money so then we definitely did feel a massive responsibility to not mess it up <laughs> and the world also became a lot bigger in terms of like oh maybe we could actually probably really do some stuff here you know we it we could imagine it a lot larger than we had initially so we'd always had ideas in the back of our mind about like the time bank and and panel events but which is something we want to do when we open up again but we we feel like there's a lot of panel events where you just sort of all chat pat yourselves on the back and then leave nothing happens <laughs> whereas yeah like it's, it's very sort of like middle class and then you know go to the national see a play about something that we've not that we already know, pat ourselves on the back and tell ourselves how great we are. And then mm. the poor people it was about just carry on struggling. Like it. <laughs> yeah. So we knew that was part of it. You know, we wanted to actually call for change and action for change. And so, you know, we we're hoping to have like panels with the writers guild and stuff like that. So actually if things are voiced, then they can go away and make changes. So we knew we wanted to do that. Um, and then I felt very strongly that I still wanted there to be a sort of performance element because we've, that's how we started. We've always put work on. So we knew we wanted opportunities there. So what we did was we sent out a, um, to anyone who had signed up to Burn Bright, we sent them a questionnaire and we thought we'll focus on the things that, that come back the most. And, and it was really like, I couldn't think of my words then, lost my mind. It was, yeah, it was like an overwhelming response that people wanted support and guidance and um, panel events actually was high. So we were like, right, Time Bank needs to be a priority then. And it was also born out of what we can do in, in lockdown. Um, so the Time Bank happened, but we were so amazed with like who signed up and how quickly and how generous they were with their time. And better in person, Sarah, thought of because she her husband is an actor and so she was witnessing these zoom reads and you know and what <laughs> and it was just in her head and she was like but it's not as good seeing that play read when I'd rather see it on the stage so how do we yeah. create something actually fit for purpose and that's how that was born and then we had a chat with our friend Tara Finney who's a producer who's just been really supportive throughout because she saw the workshop of our show initially she knew she'd been with us the whole time and she just as a mate was there for us and was a massive sounding board and the three of us just met on zoom and then like within a month we'd we'd birthed it we were just sort of like let's do it the time is now and I think because you know there was so much bad news coming out about theatre and how difficult it's looking and 
people worrying about money and you know we were like let's let's do something nice <laughs> um, in an otherwise difficult time so yeah so it's, it's been quite organic it's just ideas that are niggling and then it's what we can do yeah when we can do it and that's I think how it's going to be and we'll just keep adding yeah well, that's really. great um so yeah I mean it's it's amazing that it's such a new organization still and you're getting so many positive responses and so many people backing you and everything um have you also had people reach out to you so far who have gone through really similar experiences that you did in terms of the negativity of the industry yeah, loads and i think that was one of the most upsetting things because to be honest the number of messages we've got like it's so overwhelming the support that we were shown and it it like still makes us quite teary <laughs> we still need to sit down properly and like just go through absolutely everything because some of the stuff we read we were so in the thick of it and it was all so upsetting you don't really like yeah register it all um and so we still we're just dying to like be together and just sit and actually like now we've got clear heads go through everything but one thing that was just so upsetting at the time was how many people have been through the same thing and i think it's amazing that they now feel they can tell us and we've had a lot of messages from women who are like i i really want to tell my story i don't want to be silenced on anymore but i mean even like big big shows that are on now with successful male names attached we found have like begun with a woman but she's been erased and it's really really shocking how often it happens and how every single person involved has felt scared to to tell the truth or to take it on because you can't and it's like it's only justice if you can afford it a lot of the time you know even legally or so it's uh yeah sadly so many people have been through it but it's really brilliant that they felt able to tell us yeah. and hopefully you know together we can eventually like work towards getting them some sort of justice even if it's just a sort of emotional release because that's important too because you have to carry that and that can be quite heavy if, if there's no one you can confide in and just having someone that will listen to you and will be on yeah. your side and yeah and get it links rather than maybe being gaslighted or yeah pressured into silence yeah yeah that's amazing um so more generally yeah. now thinking about creating spaces for women and other marginalized groups in theatre would you say that it's fairly low on priority lists like particularly looking at mainstream theatre what do you mean like sorry to ask me again like <laughs> whether you think that it's something that perhaps isn't as cared about as they would like to pretend it is in mainstream oh, right. Uh, yeah marginalized voice marginalized. yeah yeah i think there's so many tick boxes and it's just like a lot a lot of it like when you read between the lines you know if it, they'll say on this channel there's been x amount of this or in this theater we've helped x amount of, it's like yeah but what have you done like yeah. have you just put some young black people's plays on in the downstairs bar yeah at a free reading yes that's what you did mm -hmm. so you can tick these boxes and make it look like you're doing a lot but actually who's leading your plays who's writing the plays you know what what representation are we seeing and it is it is always the same and it's like victoria sadler does such important work about um women playwrights in theater she does a yearly roundup yeah. and it's so upsetting when you look at it and it's full of that stuff it's like okay so they programmed five plays by women but none of them were in the main space um and you know and then when you look at black women outside of that or disabled women or i mean it's it's well, it just doesn't exist like there's just no one so no i i i think they talk a good game but i i rarely see myself represented when i go and see something yeah so like the proof's in the pudding and i feel that even with television you know it's like we've had x amount of black people in something yeah but how often are they the leads exactly. and how often are they the leads just because you know because often if they are the leads they've there's a reason they're black or indian or 
And I think when we just cast people because they're good and we're not really referencing that, you know, I don't walk around banging on about the colour of my skin all the time. I just live my life. <laughs> but I don't see many shows where I, I feel represented nine times out of ten. Yeah. The same people. Yeah, no, that's... So, um, I was actually, I was reading um, something Victoria Sadler wrote and it was um, some stats that at the National Theatre, which obviously should be, A, it's like the biggest theatre in London, A, it's in London, which is a super diverse city. And like you were saying about, you know, representing people you see on the tube. And um, last year, 35% of all the writers were women and of all the writers in total, only 10% of them were people of colour. Mm. And I, and they have, and I feel like a lot of theatres do this where they'll have, um, they'll project a year and they'll say by this year, we want this many, you know, whatever different diversities and people. Yeah. And it's instead of focusing on the now and what they can um, do now. And yeah. why, why do you think it is that it is, it feels like it's such a slow problem to try and increase. I think because it, there's not enough diversity at the top. I think it's, it is a bit of an old boys network, which is, you know, a massive reason of why we want Burnbright to exist. Um, and I think ultim ultimately people are sort of just more comfortable around, around what they know. So, they trust people who look like them to, to run things and there isn't enough diversity of thought. So it's, it's just, Oh, I know. And actually be great for that. And it's your mate and you get them in. And then, so without even thinking about it, you've, you've just got a completely white cast and it, you know, but it's like, they didn't even think, Oh, what if, what if we see a black man for that? Or what if, what if that part, wasn't a woman what if it was a man or you know like so then we have we've got a gay couple or that would work you know I've done that with a part before I've written a couple and I'm like actually you don't need to be a man and a woman there's no need so I made them both women and it works better it was <laughs> so it but I don't think there's enough of that and I think that's where it begins and I, I felt it I get wheeled into offices to sort of tell my story mm. and they're like oh we're really interested we really want to create work with you but when it comes down to it they they don't know what to do with me and they're going to go with someone a bit more accessible to them. Who's like blonde and thin and pretty and, you know, and it's, and it's not that actor's fault. She deserves every opportunity as well, but it's, there is space for both of us. Yeah. that's And yeah, it's just bizarre that they, they won't, they, they don't take enough risks, but it's like, Hamilton would have sound mental in the beginning, you know, <laughs> what yes. Lynn Punyon Rand has done. That must have sounded crazy to some people in the beginning, but they, they took a shot and they went with it and look at it. And yeah. people are ready for it. I think we underestimate our audience a lot. Yeah. And I, I think just try it. Like, just put a brown person in that role. Just, just do it. And there might be a bit of a kickback on twitter with the keyboard warriors but they'll always find something to come always clear and yeah, I, so. I think that people are so ready for it. like also looking at like death of a salesman the most recent production and how successful that was and how yeah. you know you when i went to see it i was like well yeah of course like of course it's and they didn't even need to change the script yeah, it <laughs> worked that was yeah exactly it worked yeah. Think you that, get great yeah. actors it's gonna it's a great piece there's great actors it's great it's it's really that simple it is, it is that simple and yeah yeah. I mean, yeah we need to start being more open and ready mm. for things like that because we are ready. i think it is the top though it just you need more you need different faces at the top yeah because the gatekeepers just keep letting through the same yeah and until we can get to the top people like me <laughs> and you it's it's going to keep looking like that yeah. and it's a real shame but i'm, I'm hopeful yeah mm. um so maybe we should try and talk a bit more positively about things <laughs> that are improving <laughs> so like do you think have you noticed throughout your career for example things that are improving in the industry um, <laughs> it's fine if not be honest <laughs> 
I think slowly, yeah. I I feel really lucky in my career that I I have played lots of roles where you know my race doesn't come into it and particularly like London Kills the cop drama that I do that's on the BBC there's four of us um two of us are mixed race four leads two of us are mixed race and the other two like Hugo Spear and Sharon Small who are obviously older actors brilliant actors yeah and yeah we're a we're a diverse little foursome in a way that you wouldn't sadly you wouldn't often see that even like line of duty which i love mm. the like core team are white yeah they are and we're not you've got to you know we're two like kick-ass detectives and we're brown and for me and bailey who the the other actor who's mixed race it was like a massive moment for us and that's sad in itself but you know we were sat in this f fancy car like this is big like we're doing it. And we just thought about little kids like we once were going, oh, they're detectives. And that, you know, it's positive representation. And he wasn't playing the baddie or the drug dealer like he often does. You know, he's playing the good guy. And it, it's sad that we felt that was such a moment. But, and then I spoke to one of the producers and I, I thanked him. I was like, you don't know like what a big moment this is for us and, and how this feels. And he was like, you were just the best people for the job. And it was just the nicest thing. And I know they did see all different colours and, you know, it wasn't, they just saw actors and then they just picked who they wanted. And it's sad that it feels like that doesn't ha I go to a lot of auditions where I'm like, I know they just have mm. said, let's stick a brown person in that part. Like, you can feel it. And we all come in and we all look the same. And it's just a bit embarrassing. And this one wasn't that. So there are people who do have that diversity of thought and and do cast things like a tube carriage <laughs> they do exist and there just needs to be more of it so yeah I, I I do think things are improving and I think I love that people are more vocal now sometimes I think people are too vocal and they're shouting down rather than listening and I think communication leads to change ultimately so we need to listen and we need to support each other um but I love that people will be vocal now and people will call out things as they see it and because it makes me think more. I even thought it with the other day, I saw someone um, speaking out on Twitter about their sheltering because they've got a chronic illness and they've not been outside of their house for like 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. And the government just aren't mentioning them or, or giving them any hope or any indication. And, you know, that's something that because I'm fortunate enough to not have to do that, mm. I hadn't thought of that myself. So I see it and I'm like, God, and now I'm thinking more about them and I, I'll stick up for them. And I that's all it's about really and I so I think it is exciting that that we can speak up and then amplify it and again that's what Burn Bright's about we want to amplify voices so that people don't feel alone so yeah I think there are pockets where it's improving and places like the bush that feels really forward thinking and really diverse and Lynette Linton running it and then mm -hmm. I loved what Chris Sonics was doing at the bunker. I'm so upset that that's gone, but I think all of his programming was so exciting. And so there are people doing good. Yeah. It's yeah. just a lot slower than I, than I would like. Yeah, I agree. I think a lot of people are all about the talk and less about the action. Um, but yeah, no, and I think, and it's great. And I mean, you're doing the best thing, which is, having a platform and opening it up and sharing it and having these conversations that are really important. Um, so just finally, just if someone was watching this now who was feeling, you know, pushed to one side and ignored, what advice would you give to them? So hard, isn't it? Um, it's, yeah, it's difficult because obviously it's, it's different for everybody. And I think the main thing is being kind to yourself and having a really good support network around you yeah. is number one, because your health and your happiness is always priority. And I, I really suffered through our thing and got my, I was really quite ill. Um, so I would never want anyone to, to bottle it up. I think that's the most important thing. Have good people around you and give yourself so much love <laughs> and do what you need to do for your hair. You know, if you need to take time out or whatever, it's fine. Like it, it, it can, it can be a trauma. And I think you have to allow yourself that. So that's my first thing. And then my second thing would be just believe in yourself more and know that your voice does matter. And 
you should be heard and nobody has the right to silence you. Um, and one thing that was quite upsetting to me, we kept being called brave when we did what we did. And it's a lovely thing to be called. And I'm really grateful that people felt that way because I know it's a nice thing, but it was really sad to me that we were considered brave just for telling the truth um, and for standing up for ourselves. And it's kind of, yeah, it's just upsetting that, that you're brave for sticking up for yourself. That's a bit nuts to me. So I want to live in a world where that's not brave anymore because it's just what you do. <laughs> so I think, yeah, don't, don't be afraid because we were warned that our careers would end and all, all of that. But we thought, well, we don't want to be in an industry like that then. So yeah. we'll risk it. And actually there was so much love and I think people react to truth and authenticity. So I think as long as it's from the heart and you're going about it, not because of ego or any, you know, if it's just your truth and you need to be heard, then shout it from the rooftops, man, and just make sure you've got a good team around you to give you a cuddle. Um, and yeah, tell your truth. Don't just don't be silenced raw, raw. And I'm Let living, up. Yeah. And I'm living proof that you, you do bounce back. You do come back and it might get harder before it gets easier but you will never regret having released that. And you will always find so much love and warmth from people. And anyone who doesn't meet you with that doesn't, doesn't matter anyway. So don't deserve you. Don't deserve to be in your life. <laughs> exactly. So see you later. I've done you a favor. Okay. So yeah, but always raw. You, sh you shall not be silenced. Good. I think yeah. that's the perfect way to end this chat, really. I, I'm so sorry. I waffle on so much. I'm so sorry. So interesting. I was really excited to speak to you, so I'm really glad that um, you could. So thank you. Thanks for speaking to me. Thank you. Oh well, yeah, it's been great. Um, so yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Day by day. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm definitely going to be attending on the 25th of May for the pilot. Oh, thank you. So yeah, just a shout out to anyone who's watching this. That would definitely be something to check out. Yeah, I think it will be good. I think it will be so fun. yeah. All right, Tori, so nice to speak to you and meet you. Nice to speak to you and meet you. I look forward to seeing you in the flesh and giving you a hug one day. <laughs> Good luck with everything. Take Thank care. you too. Take care. Bye.